Hello, everyone, and welcome to our today's webinar, Repositories for Research Data Management uh, in Vineo RDM. A warm welcome to all of you from my side and the whole Fair Data Austria team. My name is Sabrina Knopper from the Change Management Department at Graz University of Technology, and I will guide you through this event today. First of all, it's fantastic to see so many people taking the time to join us today to get informed about repositories for research data. The interest in repositories and good research data management in general is growing internationally, and therefore we would like to provide you with lots of information about the development and the rollout process of Invenio RDM. Um, this webinar is part of the event series Research Data Management in Austria, which promotes networking and exchange on research data management tools and services. After our webinar, the slides and the recording will be available at the following link. Um, just a short technical note in order to avoid background noise, we kindly ask you to mute yourself. And if you have any questions during the presentations, please post them into the chat and we will answer them afterwards. Also, the presentations will be recorded. So what do we have planned today? Um, Lars Horn Nielsen will start with a presentation about the Invenio RDM project. Afterwards, we will offer a comprehensive overview of the repository rollout process at different Austrian universities. And as I mentioned before, um, after each topic, we do a Q&A session where you have the possibility to ask your questions. Okay, great. So then I will um, stop to share my screen. Um, because our today's keynote is presented to us by Lars Horn Nielsen, who is software engineer at CERN and product manager for Invenio RDM. He will provide us with information on the vision and goals of the collaborative project Invenio RDM. Lars leads the Invenio RDM project at CERN. He has extensive experience in building and operating digital library platforms as well as web based platforms. He launched and grew Zenodo.org into a world leading generic digital repository platform and established key partnerships with GitHub, for example. His 20 years experience comes from managing projects and architecting innovative uh, web-based products for CERN, the European Southern Observatory and European Space Agency. So thank you very much for being with us today. We look forward to your presentation and I hereby hand over to you, Lars. Many thank you. Uh, so just a, a quick check. Can everybody see my presentation? Um, I can see that you share something, but I don't see the content. You don't see it. Okay. Uh, let me just see here. And let me try again. So. Yes. Now can, I can see Okay. It. Now it works. <laughs> Very good. Okay. So um, thank you for joining today. I'm going to talk a bit about Invenio RDM and the project in general. So first, why why do we need RDM? And uh, I, I like to start with this image, the very important laptop lost with crucial scientific data and many years of research work inside. I think this is probably an exceptional situation uh, of how to lose uh, research data. The, the more likely is that it's just not properly managed and somebody will erase it or not uh, put it put it in the wrong place and, and displace it, right? So. Uh, the fact is we need a place to, to store the research data in a managed way instead of an unmanaged uh, way. And uh, so, so what is a research data management platform? Because, I mean, um, there's many of you who comes from different points. If you talk to the storage uh, team in CERN, they will talk about storage clusters and things like that. Um, so my definition of a research data management platform is essentially a, a place where you can share and preserve any kind of research output, whether it's publications, posters, presentations, software, uh, lists, material. It's a safe place to get all kind of like research outputs into. Um, then uh, why do we need it? So we need this um, platform essentially to disseminate and archive our scientific content, right? There's a lot of content. If you just stick it on a website or GitHub, then it's not accessible. Uh, after 10 years, we, we can't find it again. It's that a lot of all the things we want to do uh, in the in an open science context about enabling reproducibility, enabling reuse of all our data, 
the key point of all these things is that we need first a place to put the stuff. If we don't have a place to put it, then basically a lot of all the open science uh, uh, things will fall apart. So I really see the uh, a research data management platform as an open science enabler. Without it, we 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 can't get all the other things. Uh, all the we can't ripe all the fruit of all the the other things. So the vision of Invenio RDM. Uh, is essentially to build a collaborative repository platform. And, and the best picture I can put uh, in the head of you is that it's a, it's a repository platform that uh, matches a little bit up with how GitHub does it. And why can't we use GitHub? Well, it's a commercial company. It's a platform made for software development. So there's a thing about like uh, people being in charge of their own things. And in a repository, we need a managed way to, to make sure that people, for instance, cannot update the content and things like that. Right? But essentially, we want to build a, a collaborative platform where people are empowered to do uh, to do the stuff. And the second part is we want to build a welcoming community. And it's both of them are uh, as important as, as the other one, right? Then some of our key guiding principles is that we want a uh, top of the class user experience for everybody in the sense that's whether it's your end users, system, system administrators, uh, developers, um, and we want uh, a systems that really can take any kind of data and is able to to scale really really well and this comes from the fact that the the entire project started by people forking off uh, Sonoda source code and that despite uh, us telling them don't do it because it's a service and, and we will break anything you do but yet people did it so that made us questions ourselves how you know why why uh, why are people forking the thing? Why are they not taking one of the other repository platforms that's already there? Um, why do they want something like Synodal? And the key thing we heard again and again was they want to provide uh, a, a good uh, user experience for the end users, and they want something that scales, uh, that's able to handle a large amount of data. Um, and having these two guiding principles also means that we, you are, uh, as, a, as when we develop the repository, we have to say no to things. We have to uh, simplify. We have to uh, do a lot of things uh, using these guiding principles. And one of them is, for instance, when you look at uh, what is the core that a repository really has to do, right? Then I see it as it's basically data in and data out. It's store the thing, make sure that we are able to uh, capture uh, the data and metadata from the, the researchers uh, have uh, as easy ways of getting content in and having as easy ways of getting content out and distributing the content to the right indexing services and, and so forth. I think this is really the primary job of, of, uh, of a repository. And then, of course, when you have that, you need some sort of like management or creation on top of it so you can improve, uh, improve both the storage and the discovery. And that for me, really t t boils down to that you have to empower the people who knows about the stuff to get the job done uh, instead of having uh, highly uh, managed processes where nobody can do do anything. So it's it's uh, this is how I also um, make this connection with GitHub. It's a platform where you can go in and get uh, do the stuff that you need to to get done. Um, also, a repository. When you look at it, uh, is is a place. If you start putting too many things into a repository and too many use cases, what you get is is this kind of like Frankenstein monster that uh, develops into something you cannot migrate away from. Um, and as I see it, right, these repositories have to be somehow resilient to uh, business changes. It has to really store the things over a long period of time, and you have to be able to somehow migrate from once the, the system is no longer the, the top of the line and the best in the system, right? You have to be able to migrate to a new system, right? So there's a lot of things in making, focusing on the core of the repository and do that really, really well, and then be able to build the architecture we're looking at in the Amino RDM is to be able to build things that, that interact with this uh, repository, but that are easier to kill off if no longer needed, but focus on the, the call. Um, so that takes me to the to the other part, that the welcoming community. And I think this is really this is really one of the highlights of Invino RDM from the start of. It's really been uh, a group of people who came together because they wanted to collaborate. It's not uh, uh, you know that the horror part, the hor horror story here is, of course, uh, some other funded projects where people come together because they're getting money. Here, people are getting together not because they're getting money, but because they want <laughs> a shared goal. 
Uh, and this is really what I think is, is defining the project very well. There's no legal agreements between the partners. There's a legal framework in terms of that people have uh, uh, owned their own IP, and we have uh, a governance model, a code of conduct, and we're licensing the thing in the, uh, with the MIT license. And that somehow puts, we use the existing tools for open source projects to, to for this thing. Then we have a, a very lively chat. Uh, this is often when we are bringing on new partners. One of the things they mentioned is that once you jump on the chat, you get uh, replies. Uh, people are friendly, very helpful, uh, things like that. So it's the, the, the welcoming community. Is, I think is a big part of um, of Invino RDM. That you know, if you join, you're actually joining a group of people that really, really uh, is in it for this uh, together. Um, so right now there's uh, uh, 23 partners. Um, so it's anything from uh, physics, of course, with, with CERN, it's uh, cultural heritage, it's commercial companies, it's institutions, it's of course uh, TU Graz, uh, TU Vienna, um, uh, some of these partners, right? But it's also anything from health sciences uh, to, uh, um, uh, how do you say, health sciences and, um biology uh, and, and things like that so we have many many different use cases and we're all coming together because we have we have a shared vision for the the key principles that we have, we're working together then uh in terms of development resources then um it is an open source project so that means that uh, everybody who's funding this is either doing it with uh, money structural funding they somehow have uh, because they have services they have to run or some of us uh, is lucky to have a little bit of uh, grant funding to do some some extra stuff okay um, right now about uh, in the last past seven months so this is a view over the past seven months when we did a an estimation is about 24 person months of development manpower so right corresponds to three three and a half uh, full-time developers on the on the core development all the time um, and about 25% of this is developers not coming from CERN. And that's compared to that uh, two years ago, that was about 1% uh, of development not coming from CERN. Okay, so we're really growing the part and it's becoming more and more uh, as we go. That is not done at CERN and that, uh, that I really see as a very good development that we're moving beyond the, the borders here of the, where we uh, created the project. Um, so where are we today? So uh, in Vinu RDM now uh, we have a first release production uh, release. It's a very minimal release that uh, you can basically share. I will show uh, some of the features later, but you can basically share records, uh, and and that's about it. There's no communities. There's no fancy features. It's it's a very minimal repository, but it's reached the stage where we say now we have something that can uh, serve as a good production system. Uh, here you have. I, I'm sure we're going to hear. A lot more about this today. Both TU Vienna and TU Graz, they have uh, deployments of Invino RDM. We also have a demo site, and there's various partners who already have a lot of uh, different um, uh, different deployments. Okay, so we kind of like unlock the first goal of just getting something that you can already uh, already run in production. Then, in terms of features, I'm gonna play safe here and not show you a live live demo. <laughs> so uh, if you um, uh, if you go uh, look at the system first, right, you have to log into a system. And there, of course, we support any kind of uh, institutional login. We have SAML and, and OAuth. So here you can see you can sign it with CERN, but also ORCID and things like that. And you can, of course, disable uh, the local login and sign up and things like that. So you can integrate properly in an, in an institutional uh, environment. Uh, then uh, you can, uh, of course, upload your content. Um, it supports both metadata only records or things with files. Uh, what you see here is that also that um, once you are on the, the, the upload form, then you can change the visibility of the record. So essentially, you we allow a record either to be fully restricted, so that means only the the, the people that are explicitly shared with can see it, or you can decide to, for instance, uh, restrict just the files. Uh, to people explicitly shared with, or you can, as you see over here, you can embargo content and make it uh, visible at a, at a specific point in time in the future, and then it will be automatically made publicly available. Other features include that you can get a UI for the content. Um, 
now in the next release in, in December 2nd, we will add support so you can have uh, include your own uh, persistent identifiers if, if that's what you want. Uh, things like small things like on the publication date, we support the extended date time format. So you can provide, for instance, uh, time periods like 39, 1939 to 1945. Uh, we have a lot of vocabularies in the um, in the system. So for instance, something like resource types, uh, date types, uh, we have subjects, for instance, this is the, uh, the OECD field of science. So all these vocabularies you can change. It's we have a, a generic system where you basically can provide your own uh, own uh, vocabulary. So if you have a different type, uh, different set of resource type that you want to have, that's possible. If you have different type date types, uh, we have partners, for instance, in the health sciences um, that uh, import the entire medical subject headings vocabularies into the subject, so you can tag record according to that uh, and, and things like that. So in general, all kind of lists you'll see, many list is is. Uh, is changeable in, in the new RDM. Um, that, for instance, also go to, to the, with respect to licenses. So you have a way that you can add uh, custom licenses, and then you have a nice license selection where we can highlight some of the most important ones. These licenses are also changeable to whatever, whatever you, you want them to be. You can add custom licenses, for instance, or, or copyright statements, things like that. When we look at creators, uh, we, we are integrating the raw vocabulary, for instance, for affiliations. And in, uh, in the coming or the, or the next coming release, you'll also have the, the auto completion for authors uh, from ORCID and, and, and the like. Um, then once you've published the record, uh, you of course get your DOI. If you've added ORCIDs, you can uh, you'll see the ORCIDs, uh, things like that. Uh, we have citation generation based on this uh, citation style language, uh, so you can change which which kind of like citation styles you want. Of course, you can customize the landing page to how you uh, you want it to look like if you don't like the default. Um, also, we have a possibility to share by link. So similar to you know from Google Docs and Dropbox and, and this this kind of system, you're able to basically uh, get a link to either view, preview, or, or edit a record and then share it with uh, with colleagues like that. Um, of course, there's a search uh, uh, facets can be changed uh, to to fit your needs uh, for a system. Uh, we have versioning support, so you can make new versions of a record, and then you can search over uh, only the latest versions or, or all the different versions. So many of the features that you might know from Sonodo, they are fully available in in the new RDM. Then. Um, in terms of the roadmap, because I said, of course, we are, we are, we are, we've just launched the first minimal viable product. So there's, of course, a lot of wishes to what, where we, what we should add. And right now, the key plant, uh, the, the key uh, top wish features for Invenio RDM is essentially our community feature and uh, support for custom fields. And that uh, is, is the two key things that we're working on right now. So that's the, the gist of this roadmap you see. On the roadmap, there's also smaller things that the, uh, each partner is working on. And essentially, the, the definition is that uh, when the things are in the current, and, and this roadmap is, is available on the website, when things are in current, a team is working on it. When it's in the near term, some team has a plan to work on it as the next coming thing. And when it's in the plan column, it means that a team have assigned uh, uh, time to work on it in the next uh, coming six months. Then what we also do is we uh, um, we show uh, we have time-based releases, so that means we're going to be re releasing here in December, in February, and in March, so that you know when the releases are coming. We unfortunately cannot tell you when a certain feature is available uh, in which release, um, partly because this is a big open source project and there's many partners involved. So uh, the lessons we've learned is that often there's things getting in the way uh, for when you do time-based releases, then it's not always that, uh, that things end up being there on time. Uh, so this way of communicating the roadmap is what we find the, the most suitable way of, of uh, communicating part of the uncertainty. Uh, with communities, we really see that as, as one of the key features uh, of, of Invenio RDM for how to handle, uh, handle requests. So this is what we're working on right now with the development team. Um, so essentially, what you see here is that uh, once you're in a community, you will basically be able to get all sorts of uh, requests coming in, for instance, for inclusion of records. 
and you can uh, have a discussion with the submitter uh, of these records uh, into the community. Uh, and then you can accept the decline, like you know uh, from Sonoto. Also, it's possible now for the curator to actually edit and help uh, create the better metadata for the record uh, and the like. Okay, but this is coming in the in the next coming months. Is what we're is one of the key features we're we're working on having this style of request handling. Then, um, in Vino RDM at CERN uh, is is a key priority for us. Um, we are going to move Sonodo on top of Invino RDM. Um, I don't want to give any dates on when it's happening, but it's our top priority because uh, right now, uh, Sonodo is uh, something like 2 million records. Uh, we have a uh, large scale operation of Sonodo. Uh, and because of that, it's, it's, uh, it's a big system to move uh, and there's a lot to do. The next thing after Sonodo is that we have the CERN document server, which is a, a 30 year old uh, system, uh, the repository system. Uh, that has grown uh, grown over time that we're also going to move on, on top of Invino RDM. So for us, Invino RDM is really a, a key priority and a way for us uh, not only to, to share what we're doing, but also to optimize, uh, optimize our own costs. Then I'll just end with our vision again. So building this collaborative repository platform, uh, a GitHub of repositories, and building this welcoming community. This is our key uh, key vision for Invino Audio. Many thanks. Thank you very much, Lars, uh, for the insights in the demo. And it's very motivating, I think, for the coming community, as you mentioned. Thank you. So now there's the possibility to ask your questions, or you can also comment on last presentation. I think it was very, very well structured. <laughs> Thanks again, Lars. You have also the possibility to ask questions in the chat, uh, even if we move on. Lars, are you there for yeah. answering questions? Can you stay a little bit? Yeah, I'm, I'm here until 11. OK, yeah, great. So here we have a question. Can it be used for hosting source code? So uh, yes, um, so I think there's, um, especially with source code, uh, there's many trigger pins. So the goal is what, what do you want to achieve? So um, is it because you want to get the, the citation to the source code and collect citation? And I think the repository is the right place. Is it because you want something to, uh, to collaborate on? then uh, the repository is not the right place. But I think it's a place to snapshot the source code so you at least have it. Then there's also work. Um, we have work ongoing with Software Heritage, for instance, who does the archiving a little bit like the Internet Archive uh, in sense of just taking everything. And that's another way. And I think both of them have slightly different purposes. But essentially, if if you need to, um, to be able to cite software, you then the, the trick is you need a DUI to integrate into the into all these discovery systems. And uh, you get a DUI mainly by putting things in a repository. OK, thank you. OK, there's a comment. I yeah. find the possibility to archive software from GitHub in Zenodo with a couple of clicks very handy. Yeah. So I think that's perhaps also one of the, the to, to highlight a little bit what I said, what is the core of a repository? So it has to be easy to get content in. And for instance, the GitHub integration is, is one way of getting things easy into a repository without too many obstacles for, for the researchers, right? It is coming to Invenio RDM since we're putting Sonodo on top and it's one of our, our key features. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then so I see what the, what about long-term aspect of Invino RDM? Are there any features planned to support digital preservation? So we have uh, a partner uh, in the project Data Futures who is working a lot on going and, and vacuuming up uh, um, uh, kind of like research data put into all sorts of uh, WordPress and Drupal instances in, in cultural heritage uh, and putting that into a proper repository. Uh, they have now planned uh, to add OCFL support, the Oxford Common File System layout, and have a way that we can write down a preservation copy so that you can take uh, basically 
killed in Vinyo RDM, throw it away, and then you have an OCFL structure that you could uh, possibly put into another repository. So yes, there's, there's plans for this preservation. Okay, great. Okay, so if any further questions appear, they will be posted in the chat. Right, I, I was hoping to add I have one question. We, we are looking into uh, Invenio RDM. I think uh, I'm from TU Delft in uh, the Netherlands. Um, uh, one of the things we're thinking of is having Invenio RDM perhaps as a repository solution also uh, to link it to our CRIS system, which happens to be pure. Um, so I'd be interested in how, how, what is your vision on this kind of integrations? You have to talk to to Christoph, who's doing a presentation a bit later, because he's also having the same uh, same use case, and I think University of Hamburg has the same thing. Okay, um, thank you. So, so uh, I I think it goes back to my um, my main thing of what is the primary job of a repository is to to store and discover, and I think integrating with some sort of Chris system and having the APIs uh, for for other system is important. How to do it? Uh, we didn't get to that point yet. Okay, so I think there are more questions in the chat. Yeah. Um, let's see, so how, how about managing research data other than text, for instance, medical imaging enriched with metadata? So the, the, the way uh, in Vinyo RDM scales is uh, by letting storage systems take care of all the hard work of, of big files. And, and preservation. So Invenio RDM accepts any kind of like byte stream. That's of course not good for preservation, but then you have the possibility to build in kind of like file processing uh, on the back end, uh, file verification, if that's what you like. Right now Invenio RDM doesn't have a lot of things. We, we the, the goal is first to get the things in the content, uh, but it is, there's nothing uh, that uh, prevents you from storing these medical images there and then building up some sort of previewers for it, uh, for instance. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, there's a comment, great talk, Lars. <laughs> Thanks a lot. And I'm really impressed by the active community around Invenio RDM. I was wondering how do you deal with community contributions, contributions, desires, for example, in terms of conflicting contributions, suggestions, ideas? Is there any mm -hmm. ideal community size? Mm -hmm. That's a mm -hmm. difficult one. So, of course, as, as the community grows, that's a bigger and bigger chance for conflict of in, in which direction we should go, right? So, I think that the key thing there is that, that we have guiding principles that classify user experience and scalability as two key guiding principles that we're, work, that we're collaborating together on. That, that helps us when we, when we have conflict in decisions, then it helps us guide us, you know, which one is the right way of going. It's not that we should do everything, it's that we should do things that according to these guiding principles. Then um, um, the way we, we bring uh, on contributions now, for instance, is that we, we, uh, we have a core team that runs sprints for each release and their partners can join in. So even if you come in as a new partner, uh, you can join one of these full-time sprints that helps you in order to uh, actually get integrated in a team with people who knows a lot about the product. Uh, it helps you to learn a lot about it, so it's good for your training, and it helps us bringing uh, onboarding new people uh, in a in a good way and teaching them about the project. So the best way of of getting in is is basically join one of these uh, development sprints if it's for development. Then of course there's also um, uh, other types of contribution, right? So for instance, uh, TU Grass is now leading the the internationalization efforts, uh, and and our philosophy there is that main you know uh, if you participate and can show that you've already contributed some stuff, then you should be allowed to uh, take on more and more responsibility, uh, be able to merge the stuff uh, on the repository, be able to, to do stuff, okay? We, we try to, again, a little bit like with the, with the repository itself, we try to empower people to get the job done and be there as support. For us, it's better the more people we, we get onboarded and, and into the vision, the better we can uh, sustain the product long-term. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well put. Thank you. <laughs> uh, 
Um, there's another one. Um, you were mentioning that we can define our own vocabulary. Can we also use ontologies from the semantic web and link to it? So um, our vocabularies is essentially, if you can import it into some sort of JSON form, then it's um, importable into the system, OK? Uh, so it, it depends on how you want to do it. So, uh, and it perhaps ties a little bit to the previous questions as well. How, how do you deal with con uh, conflicting contributions? So we try to, we have the Invenio framework below Invenio RDM, and we try to make Invenio RDM to have a core of Invenio RDM. And if you like to extend it and put in your own things into into the core, you can do that. And that's that's one way of dealing with it, that we, we agree on a, on a minimum viable thing, but allow people to go and build, uh, build whatever extra they, they want. Of course, you can have conflict on this, this center of thing. Then in terms of vocabulary, we've done it like this, that you can import these uh, basically JSON records or any kind of things into, into it. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you. And there's another one. I would like to know how many persistent identifiers have each register. Uh, so uh, when you, um, if I understand it correctly, so then tell me if, if I'm not answering the question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so when you deposit a record into into Sonoro, then uh, we can either uh, uh, you can manually uh, get a persistent identifier. So for instance, we configure the main Invino RDM to do data site DUIs. This is what is provided out of the box with Invino RDM. Then we have uh, other partners who have to also get data site DUIs, but they have to go through a different API to get those data site uh, DUIs. Uh, and they can find them use their own. If you want an ARG or handle identifiers, you would have to write a component to, to get these now. Okay. But uh, it's 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 that there's persistent identifier management inside the the system, and you can extend that. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I think that's that's the answer. <laughs> um, okay. And is there experience with large scale import of publications from other systems? I think the the short answer here is no. Once uh, and that that's perhaps another point here is that. Um, in Vino RDM is good for small use cases right now. As soon as you see Sonoro running on Vino RDM, then I can answer yes to that system and I can and put my head on the, the block and say, now we have a large scale production system that works. Uh, then uh, Sonoro is currently about 2 million uh, records, right? It's, uh, it has a grant, uh, about 10 million grants, uh, a database of 10 million grants and the like. So uh, once we have Sonoro running, we know that Invenio can sustain large load and it can sustain large amount of records and large amount of data. Okay. So, does anyone ask another question to Lars? There were already a lot of questions for you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much for answering. And it's also possible um, to ask another question in the chat. But we will now yeah. move on to our next presentation. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.